fellow nerds Today I am going to read about the Dragonborns in Dungeons and Dragons Not the Dragonborn we know from Elder Scrolls Skyrim So let us begin Born of dragons, as their name proclaims the dragonborn walk proudly through a world that greets them with fearful incomprehension. Shaped by draconic gods or the dragons themselves, dragonborn originally hatched from dragon eggs as a unique race combining the best attributes of dragons and humanoids. Some dragonborn are faithful servants to true dragons. Others form the ranks of soldiers in great wars and still others find themselves adrift with no clear calling in life. Proud Dragonkin Dragonborn look very much like dragons standing erect in humanoid form, though they lack wings or a tail. The first dragonborn had scales of vibrant hues and matching the colors of their dragonkin. But generations of interbreeding have created a more uniform appearance. Their small, fine scales are usually brass or bronze in color, sometimes ranging to scarlet, rust, gold or copper green. They are tall and strongly built, often standing close to six and a half feet tall and weighing 300 pounds or more. Their hands and feet are strong, talon-like claws with three fingers and a thumb on each hand. The blood of a particular type of dragon runs very strong through, through some dragonborn clans. These dragonborn often boast scales that more closely match those of their dragon ancestor. Bright red, green, blue or white, lustrous black or gleaming metallic gold, silver, brass, copper or bronze. Self-sufficient clans To any dragonborn, the clan is more important than life itself. Dragonborn owe their devotion and respect to their clan above all else, even the gods. Each dragonborn's conduct reflects on the honor of his or her clan and bringing dishonor to the clan can result in expulsion and exile. Each dragonborn knows his or her station and duties within the clan and honor demands maintaining the bounds of that position. A continual drive for self-improvement reflects the self-sufficiency of the race as a whole. Dragonborn values skill and excellence in all endeavors. They hate to fail and they push themselves to extreme efforts before they give up on something. A dragonborn holds mastery of a particular skill as a lifetime goal. Members of other races who share the same commitment find it easy to earn the respect of a dragonborn. Though all dragonborn strive to be self-sufficient, they recognize that help is sometimes needed in difficult situations. But the best source of such help is the clan, and when a clan needs help, it turns to another dragonborn clan before seeking aid from other races, or even from the gods. Dragonborn Names Dragonborn have personal names given at birth. But they put their clan names first as a mark of honor. A childhood name or nicknames often used among clutchmates as a descriptive term or a term of endearment. The name might recall an event or center on a habit. Male names Arshan Palasar Barash Dona Shamash, Shidin, Tarun, Turin.
female names Akra, Piri, Da'ar, Faride, Haran, Havila, Sheri, Kava, Kurin, Mishan, Nala, Pera, Rayan, Sora. Childhood names Klaima Iabenda Lipa Pius Shieldbiter Zealous Clan names Kletinthia Lor Daandendrian Del Miref Grache Dandion Fenken Kabadron Kepesh Mulik Kerilon Kimbatul Linksa Kasendalor Miastan Nemonis Nurixius Ofinstalagir Prexi Jandilin Shestendeliath Turnuroth Fethistasugiesh Yagerit Uncommon races. The dragonborn and the rest of the races in this chapter are uncommon. They don't exist in every world of Dungeons and Dragons. And even where they are found, they are less widespread than dwarves, elves, halflings, and humans. In the cosmopolitan cities of the DD multiverse, most people hardly look twice at members of even the most exotic races. But the small towns and villages that dot the countryside are different. The common folk aren't accustomed to seeing members of these races, and they react accordingly. Dragonborn It's easy to assume that a dragonborn is a monster especially if his or her scales betray a chromatic heritage. Unless the dragonborn starts breathing fire and causing destruction, though people are likely to respond with caution rather than outright fear. Gnome Gnomes do don't look like a threat and can quickly disarm suspicion with good humor. The common folk are often curious about gnomes, likely never having seen one before but they are rarely hostile or fearful. Half-elf Although many people have never seen a half-elf, virtually everyone knows they exist. A half-elf stranger's arrival is followed by gossip behind the half-elf's back and stolen glances across the common room rather than any confrontation or open curiosity. Half-orc it's usually safe to assume that a half-orc is belligerent and quick to anger. So people watch themselves around an unfamiliar half-orc. Shopkeepers might surreptitiously hide valuable or fragile goods when a half-orc comes in. And people slowly clear out of a tavern, assuming a fight will break out soon. Tiefling Half orcs are greeted with a practical caution, but tieflings are the subject of supernatural fear. The evil of their heritage is plainly visible in their features, and as far as most people are concerned, a tiefling could very well be a devil straight from the nine hells. People might make warding signs as a tiefling approaches, crossing the street to avoid passing near 
or bar shop doors before a tiefling can enter. Returning to the Dragonborn Dragonborn Traits Your draconic heritage manifests in a variety of traits you share with other Dragonborn. Ability score increase. Your strength score increases by 2 and your charisma increases by 1. Age Young Dragonborn grow quickly. They walk hours after hatching, attain the size and development of a 10-year-old human child by the age of 3 and reach adulthood by 15. They live to be around 80 years. Alignment Dragonborn tend to extremes, making a conscious choice for one side or the other in the cosmic war between good and evil, represented by Bahamut and Tiamat, respectively. Most Dragonborn are good, but those who side with Tiamat can be terrible villains. Size Dragonborn are taller and heavier than humans, standing well over 6 feet tall and averaging almost 250 pounds. Your size is medium. Speed Your base walking speed is 30 feet. Draconic Ancestry The Black Dragon Ancestry gives you acid damage and a breath weapon 5 by 30 feet line with a dexterity save. The Blue Dragon Ancestry gives you lightning damage. The Brass Dragon gives you fire damage. The Bronze Dragon also lightning damage. And the Copper Dragon gives you acid damage. All of these types have a breath weapon 5 by 30 feet line with a dexterity save. The gold dragon gives you fire damage with a 15 feet cone and dexterity save. The green dragon stands for poison damage, again a 15 feet cone, but this time a constitution save. Red stands also for fire with a 15 feet cone, breath weapon and a dexterity save. The silver dragon stands for cold damage, as does the white dragon. Both require a constitution save. You have draconic ancestry. Choose one type of dragon from the draconic ancestry tale. That's the one I just read out to you. Your breath weapon and damage resistance are determined by the dragon type, as shown in the table. Oh, I understand now. The heritage doesn't grant you a damage type, it grants you resistance to a certain damage kind. The more you know. Breath Weapon You can use your action to exhale destructive energy. Your Draconic Ancestry determines the size, shape and damage type of the exhalation. When you use your Breath Weapon, each creature in the area of the exhalation must make a saving throw. The type of which is determined by your Draconic Ancestry. The DC for the saving throws equals 8 plus your Constitution modifier plus your Proficiency bonus. A creature takes 2d6 damage on a failed save and half as much damage on a successful one. The damage increases 
to 3d6 at 6th level and 4d6 at 11th level and 5d6 at 16th level. After you use your breath weapon, you can't use it again until you complete a short or long rest. Damage resistance. You have resistance to the damage type associated with your draconic ancestry. Languages. You can speak, read and write common and draconic. Draconic is thought to be one of the oldest languages and is often used in the study of magic. The language, language sounds harsh to most other creatures and includes numerous hard consonants and sibilants. So much for the dragonborn. Thanks again for listening fellow nerds. I hope you enjoyed this one. Have a good night. See you next time.